I said, go ahead and do this so our focus can be right. I told the band, I said, Lord, we are the sheep of your pasture. Amen. You are the good shepherd. Amen. And I started worshiping and I started singing a song. And I want you to sing it with me this morning. <coughs> Lord, prepare me to be a saint. Go. 
to His Holy Word this morning. We're going to hear from Him. Amen. We're going to hear from Him. Turn around and shake. Just look at somebody and say, hey, for a moment. Let me... You know, uh, as we begin a new year, I, I sometimes become amused with all the things I see out there with <coughs> prophets and people, you know, that declare and, and, and share it's going to be a year of jubilee and a year of abundance and they start making all these promises and so yes, it's a new year, a year of new beginnings, a year of breakthrough. I jotted some of them down. You can, this is going to be the year and you fill in the blank. But the truth is that for some it will be a blessing. But for others, it will be a year of brokenness. Yes, for even Christians. For some, it will be a year of prosperity, and for others, it will be a year of struggle. For some, it will be a year of tragedy, but for others, it will be a year of trial. You see, this book that I'm just open and I'm fixing to share the word of the Lord from, it covers everything in life. The good and the bad. And those believers that laid their head on chopping blocks and their heads were cut off and they were dipped in hot boiling oil and they were crucified upside down. And, you know, that's real. So this morning I want to share with you from my gut, from my heart, what the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God is here. What He's wanting to, to share. But no matter where we fall, because no matter how bad we would want it to be a, a, just a perfect year, no matter where we fall, it isn't what comes to us that determines our depth of faith. But it's how we deal with it that determines our depth of faith. Life isn't always fair, but God is good. <laughs> People aren't always fair. But God is still good. Amen. Situations in life isn't always fair. But God is good. Amen. So no matter as we enter into this new year, I just told you the truth right there. The Lord just said the truth right there. I'm telling you, God is good. This is the greatest thing we could possibly do right here. Come and worship him together as a family until Jesus comes back. Anybody ready for Jesus to come back? Yeah. All right. Let's read verses 16 through 20, Isaiah chapter 1. God, you are good, good, good. I wish somebody just out there say, God is good, Pastor. God is good. Yeah, God is good. He's good. Let's go right here, verse 16 through 20. Wash yourselves, make yourselves clean. Put away the evil of your doings from before my eyes. Cease to do evil, learn to do good, seek justice. Rebuke the oppressor, defend the fatherless, and plead for the widow. Come now and let us reason together, the Lord says. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Listen to verse 19. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. If you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured by the swords. For the mouth of the Lord 
as spoken. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this beautiful congregation. Thank you, Lord, for the word of the Lord. Thank you because you've already spoken, God. Thank you for the worship and the spirit of, that we feel, the spirit of God. Your spirit is here. Thank you, Jesus, for being the Son of God and for coming to this earth and dying on the cross so that we could be joined together, heirs with Christ Jesus, with you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for sending him so that we can have eternal life because we know that you love us for you are love. And it's in Jesus Christ's name that we pray. The church says, Amen. You may be seated. Willing and obedient heart. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. Amen. It says, but if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured by the sword. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. What verse of scripture? If you are willing and obedient. You know, as I read this, the vision that came to Isaiah, according to verse 1. He started sharing to the people what the Lord was showing him. And there was, in verse 2, he, he goes he's, and he says at the end of that verse... And they have rebelled against me. Rebellion. People that rebel against God. That's what Israel and Judah was doing in Isaiah's time. They had came to a place, and if you were to read that whole chapter, you would see where he had told them you had... At one time you were you were serving me, but for some reason you have you are rebelling against me. And he tells them in verse 16, he says, Wash yourselves, make yourselves clean, repent, put away the evil of your doings from before my eyes and cease to do evil. He tells him, he says, learn to do good. Start practicing doing good, he tells them. Amen. Start partaking in those things that will help us be a good person, a good Christian, is what he's telling the people, people of Israel. He says, seek justice and rebuke the oppressor. Rebuke them. Call them out. Rebuke them that are oppressing. Defend the fatherless. Those who are fatherless. Defend them. And he says, plead for the widow. Pray, plead. Beg for the widow. And then he goes to the, the verses. He says, come now and let us reason together. Just like right now. Come now and let us reason together. Lord, here we are. You know what we did this week. You know the sins that we've committed. You know what we're bringing to you. You know our mindsets and our attitudes. You know what we are going to do next week. We want, we want you to take it, Lord. And the Lord is telling these people, bring all that and let's reason together. Let's have a powwow. Let's get together and have a conversation. And the Lord still wants to do that with the body of Christ today. The Lord is calling those that are running and those that are uh, living in their sins 
He's calling those and he's saying to them, come let us reason today. Because why? Because he is a good God. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And he says, though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Now here goes what, here goes the kicker right here. And I underlined and circled this verse right here. Because the Lord says to them, the condition. He says to them what they are to do. How they are to live. How they are to get beyond their rebellion. Because there is a, there, the spirit of rebellion is real. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Just have a little baby. <laughs> and let it get about one or two. And you will see one of the first words they learn is what? No. no. Where did that come from, Pastor? It come from Adam and Eve. It's in our DNA. That's why we need a Savior. That's why we need Jesus. <laughs> Because our natural reaction in our, that's in our DNA that Satan tricked Adam and Eve with, this spirit of rebellion, not listening to what God had told them to do, which has led us to where we are today. It's real. The spirit of selfishness and the spirit of bitterness that that develops on the inside of us is so real today that it chokes. I heard, I don't know if y'all have ever heard of, uh, God, I forgot his name. Anyway, he preached a message on the spirit of the python. <coughs> Jensen Franklin. That's it. It is real. The spirit of the python, the spirit of rebellion that, that, can, that can get on the inside of us through, through small things that festers in our heart, that we allow bitterness to reside and live on the inside of us. We would, instead, of, instead of coming and reasoning with God and let, letting us experience how good God really is, we allow the rebellion and the bitterness. We're not willing to. And we're not obedient to the Holy Spirit when he's speaking to us. And therefore, the spirit of rebellion is birthed with Satan. Y'all are quiet this morning. <laughs> now, the spirit of rebellion is a very dangerous and harmful thing. It's, it, it, it really goes all the way back before the garden. If you were to go to the first book that was written in the Bible, which is not Genesis, but Job, whenever Satan had an encounter with God and he rebelled against God himself and God kicked uh, Satan out, Lucifer, out of heaven, down to this earth, and he, he, he was rebelling against God. He didn't want to listen to God. And he took, he took a lot of the angels with him that are still on this earth. What, what, cre what, what created rebellion is Satan himself. And here goes where rebellion starts affecting us in 2018, starts affecting me and you as a person. This is how it's birthed. It's birthed through bitterness. We were to look at Saul, whenever he was talking with Samuel in 1 Samuel chapter 15, whenever the Lord was taking the mantle off of him and he was fixing to go to a shepherd field, somebody whose heart was ready for the Spirit of God. He tells them if you were to go there to 1 Samuel, I'll read it to you. He tells them, he says, 
Why then did you not obey the voice of the Lord? This is what Samuel is saying in verse 19 to Saul. Why then did you not obey the voice of the Lord? Why did you swoop down on the spoil and do evil in the sight of the Lord? And Saul said to Samuel, but I have obeyed the voice of the Lord. So Saul was in a mindset when Samuel went to him where he thought that he had heard the voice of the Lord. But there's something that was missing in Saul that God did not, could not detect, that he did not see in the heart of Saul. Now what was the deal here? The deal was that God had told Saul to go and kill the uh, uh, Milekites, I believe it is, and to destroy everything everything that they had. And Samuel is right here asking him, why did you not obey the voice of the Lord? Why did you do part of what God told you to do? But why have you not fully listened to the voice of the Lord yet? And we see that when Saul says something to Samuel whenever he says, but I have obeyed the voice of the Lord and gone on the mission on which the Lord sent me. And I have destroyed the Amalekites, but the people took of the plunder sheep and oxen and the best things which should have been utterly destroyed to sacrifice to the Lord your God. Here goes what the problem was. They, Saul said, I'm willing to give you part of me, God, but I'm not willing to give you all of me, God. I'm willing to listen and obey you to a certain extent, God, but I'm going to keep what I want, the good. They're going to keep the good that I think I need. I can't give you and listen to what you are telling me to completely do for your glory, Jesus. I'm willing to go so far, Saul, but I'm not willing to give you everything and all I am and give you my whole heart. I, I got to rebel just a little bit. And God wants me to tell you if a little sin led you the whole lump. You just, when God tells you to do something, you just can't partly do it. No, God don't work that way. Now I'm getting preaching. I didn't want to start getting preaching. God, you just know when God saved you, he gave you the most ultimate sacrifice that he could possibly send from heaven. Look at your son if he's in here, which is God's only son. And he sent him down to a people that was sins were going crazy so that he could sacrifice his own son and bring us into eternal life. This is the kind of relationship God wants. And he goes on and he tells them. He says, Samuel said in verse 22, Has the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? He tells some, he says, Do you think that this is really impressing God? The fact that you've partly done what he's, what he's asked you to do? And then as in obeying the voice of the Lord, behold, and this is the famous scripture that we all know, to obey is better than to sacrifice. And to heed that than the fat of rams. And rebellion, here it is, the sin of rebellion. And rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. My God, Lord, help us to understand the importance of our relationship with you, oh God. Lord, help us this morning to see your glory and to understand that, yes, sacrifices is what you've asked, but the real thing is doing it all what God's told us to do, to being obedient to the Holy Spirit. And listen to what he says. 
and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. He says, here goes what he says. He says, the fact that you that God has spoken the word of the Lord to us, and the fact that we don't do what the word of the Lord is telling us to do, that we are not listening to the Spirit of God, who is just as powerful as anything, as any of Satan's people that got kicked out of heaven back in whenever that happened, in heaven, back in Job. God is just as powerful today if we will obey and we are willing to listen to the Lord. Amen. Now, let me tell you, I want to sh show you a difference right here. Now, because some of us can be like Saul. Some of us can think that we are being obedient whenever we are actually not being obedient. And here goes what separates you from that whenever you do it willingly, let me give you an example. My boys will be in the back of the car. They'll be getting on my nerves every day when I pick them up from school. They're loud, obnoxious, they're fighting one another, and they're, they're fighting every day. And I'll tell them, y'all hush. Anybody else ever did that? Y'all need to hush. How in the world y'all hadn't seen me y'all all day? And y'all literally 30 seconds I picked Logan and Aunt Isaac up first. And you would think, my goodness, this is ridiculous. I tell Miss Peggy, I say, y'all hush. They'll hush until I get to China Grove Middle School. And when I get to China Grove Middle School to pick Andrew up because it's like another layer gets thrown in there. They start going back at it again. Why are you sitting in the front? I'm supposed to sit in the front. Mama said I can sit in the front now. I'm eight years old, 80 pounds. <laughs> and Isaac's I, I going, you're not 80 pounds and you're not. You're not ready. No, you can't sit in the front. Mama, and it's <laughs> And Logan now, he's, turn, he's fixing to turn seven, and he thinks he can sneak in there and get in the front seat earlier. And when he's supposed to, and it's like this right here. And I'll tell him in the car, Brother Richard, I'll say, hush. And then they, and then they get so obedient, they don't hush. No. I have to get mad until they think I'm a break on them. And I'll say, y'all need to hush or you're not playing video games. And then they... <laughs> And there's a holy hush. <laughs> <laughs> and Charles, I'll look in my mirror, Brother Bill, and I'll see them doing this right here at one another. <laughs> <laughs> Did they hush? <laughs> sort of. <laughs> They'll be wrestling. Well, you know you got three boys when they body slam in one another. I mean, every time Isaac and Andrew will be going at it, and then Logan will be on me. And then they would just be going at it. And I'll get tired and I'll say, y'all need to sit down. Sit down. Y'all don't holler like that? I do. It feels good. I holler like that. Is that good parenting? I don't know. <laughs> I know I'm a good daddy. They got good shoes on their feet. They got good clothes on their back. They got good food in their belly. They got a house they live in. So I don't know. If they come on knocking on my door, I'm going to say, I don't know what you're talking about. Go look at their video games. They got video games. They got everything. But y'all going to sit down in my house. Y'all ain't going to put holes in my wall. And they did. <laughs> they did it anyway. They broke the little knob that keeps the door from hitting the wall. And the door went in the wall. Had to pay somebody to fix it because I can't do drywall work. <laughs> and I tell them, sit down. And Isaac got brave one day. 
my feet. I know, I know. Mindy said, leave our family alone. <laughs> leave our family alone. And he was, he sat down. He was so fidgety. He said, I'm sitting down on the inside. I'm standing up. <laughs> Were they obedient? Yeah, because I was fixing to take their game. But were they completely obedient? No, they were rebelling on the inside. That's okay because I didn't care they were sitting down. I didn't care what they were doing on the inside. I believe God was doing a work on them on the inside. And when they hushed, I didn't care if they were going. I could see him saying, don't say it. But the point is this. You can be thinking that you are being obedient, but on the inside, the heart not being right. And you can be partly obedient, and you can be doing it and not being willing to do it. And there's a difference, and that's why he told Isaiah, told them, Bill, he said, if you are willing and obedient, if what you're doing is because you want to do it, if, I was, if you would have called me after this fast, and I didn't have any lunch plans about 11.30, and you said, Pastor, do you want to go to lunch today? Brother and sister, I would be willing to do that. <laughs> if, you, if, I didn't, if it was a beautiful day and I didn't have any plans and you called me and you said, Pastor, you want to go play golf today? And I was free? I'd say, man, I feel the Lord all in that. Why don't we go play golf today? If some of you got a phone call from one of your friends and you didn't have anything going on today and they said to you, you know what, I got a free gift certificate to the rock barn. You want to go to the rock barn with me today? <laughs> that place is heaven. Let's go. What are you doing? It's a spa. <laughs> it's a spot. And you didn't have any kids, maybe? And you didn't have your husband sitting there going all over you? And everybody was feeling good at the house and you could break away for half a day? And it didn't cost you anything? Brothers and sisters, you would feel the willingness that I'm talking about right here. You would feel that willingness, let's go. Let's do it. And see, that's what God is wanting from his people. The spirit of rebellion had got in their heart. And the prophet Isaiah was telling them, if you are willing and you will obey, then God can, will give you the best of the land. Now, how many of you want the best of, your, of the land? Amen? Amen? Well, that's how you get it. Being willing. To go. Oh, yeah. Yeah. In the small things. Next time the boss tells you to do something you don't want to do, go ahead and be willing to say, He's crazy, but I'm going to do it for you, Jesus. <laughs> I'm going to be willing. I'm going to be willing. Whenever a kid is on his last nerve, be willing to show him another nerve. <laughs> Extend, turn the cheek. Whenever the marriage and the relationships are going bad and they don't want to talk to you, how about be willing to go and talk to them because the best of the land is yours. If you will be willing to fully Listen and obey the spirit 
of God. Boy, that's a good truth right there. Somebody just give the Lord praise right now. That's a good time right there to give the Lord praise. Because here's the thing we learn in the New Testament. We learn the, what they had that we, did, that we don't possess as much. When the Spirit of God was moving, and He still is moving today, he is willing to give his power to anybody who is willing to obey his spirit. Now listen to what he says. Peter in Acts chapter 5, whenever they were in court and on trial. And brothers, the world, let me just say this. If you are in Christ Jesus, there is no condemnation under heaven against you. If we, it's the world that condemns. Jesus loves you. Though your sins may be many and they may, he, he, he will wash them away and you will be white as snow. Brothers and sisters, it's not the end. It's, God is not the enemy right here. Satan is the enemy. He's the one that allows things to come in our mind so that we can't hear and listen to the Spirit of God. He's the one that attacks us where we can't obey and walk in obedience. He's the one that takes the willingness out of us and he wants us to be willing to do other things other than obey God. He's there. Satan does all that. But Peter on the... After the day of Pentecost happened, was full of the Holy Ghost. You don't mess with people who are full of the Holy Ghost. People who are full of the Holy Spirit. If you're full of the Holy Spirit, let me tell you something. You got one of the most powerful weapons you will ever have. There ain't an addiction. There ain't a person. There ain't a thought that you can't pull down. The Bible says, pull down every strong, every take it captive, every stronghold by the pulling down. There are you, if you're full of the Holy Ghost, then you're not a weak person, brothers and sisters. You are a strong person that has weapons that God can use in you that can turn your world and the people's world around you upside down for Jesus. Amen. What does he say? Well, did you not strictly command did they not strictly, do we not, I'll get it right, do we not strictly <laughs> command you not to teach in this name? And look, you have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood on us. But Peter and the apostles answered and said, we ought to obey God rather than man. Full of the Holy Ghost this man was. And the God of our fathers raised up Jesus whom you murdered by hanging on a tree. Him God has exalted to his right hand to be prince and savior. Yeah. To give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are his witnesses to these things. And so also is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey him. Amen. I'm telling you, there ain't nothing greater God can teach us this morning than to be obedient and to be willing. I don't know what all everybody's got going on. Brothers and sisters, I can barely keep up with what I got going on. By the time you're picking kids up and taking kids off and one going to guitar lessons and basketball practice two nights a week and back three games on, on Saturday, my nerves is shot. <laughs> but here goes what I do know. That there is, a, there is the Spirit of God that will come and minister to us. Brother Phil, you said it Wednesday night. The Holy Spirit will minister to us whenever we need it. If we'll just have the willingness and the obedience to be able to hear him when he speaks. Man, I could give you example after example. Pastor Brad, I could tell them about Ananias in Acts chapter 9. 
The Bible comes to Ananias and the Holy Spirit tells him. The Holy Spirit tells him, says, why don't I want you to go to Saul and I want you to knock on this door right here, go to this house, and I want you to preach Jesus to them and tell, only thing you got, tell them that the Lord has sent me. And Ananias said these words, I can't go there. He's killing people. He's killing Christians. You're going to send me there and he's killed more. He's got more blood on his hands than anybody that is living right now. And the Holy Spirit said, go do it. Now, what is the next step that we have to take that Ananias takes right here? He is willing to be obedient to the Holy Spirit. And whenever he knocks on the door, somebody says, I've been waiting on you. And the Holy Ghost has been working on the other side. And he starts experiencing what God's plans were intended for. Meaning, he bumps this great big husky man that had killed more people off his donkey. And he lands on a dirt road as he's going to kill more Christians. And he, and he blinds him for three days. And he receives Jesus Christ and baptized in the Holy Ghost simply because a man named Ananias was willing to listen to the Holy Spirit. Amen. And from, yeah, give the Lord to And from that moment on, God has been turning the world upside down with his Holy Ghost, and the Holy Spirit has been saving people in about every nation that you can imagine, he is pouring out his spirit simply because Ananias was willing to obey. God will do that for us if we are willing to obey. I want another example. I'll give you another example. It's just coming right out of my head. Yeah, when Paul was addressing the Corinthians, and he was talking about the law and giving and all that stuff, tell them. He says, and when you give, for don't do it generously. Do it willfully. Do it spirit spiritually. Just spread it out. For God loves. A cheerful giver. Yeah. When you pray, he tells them, be willing to get away from everybody. I'm telling you, one of the best feelings in the world is to get alone. <laughs> I got an amen right there. <laughs> to just get along with God. In the Sermon on the Mount, he says, if you're willing, go into your closet, shut the door behind you, and anything you ask in my name, I will do. Amen. Pray. Pray. You don't have to stand on street corners. Fast. If you're fasting, wash your face off the Bible. Because God will open up in his spirit as you are willing to obey. God will open up things in his spirit that you have never dreamed of, brothers and sisters. He's just that good of a God. You know what, bro? The enemy wants us to rebel. He don't want us to say, okay, God, I'm willing to obey. I'm not going to give you half of me, a part of me, or this department in my life. I'm going to give you everything that I am. I'm willing to obey. I've been serving him for almost 20 years. Coming up this year. And Alex, there's never been a time I've walked in more rooms and looked at family members. I've been in hospital rooms. I've, I, I've, heard, the, I've heard the reports. 
I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, that the Spirit of God, I've been broke as a junk and had to depend on God to give me, to meet my need for Him to show up. We've been poor. I'm telling you, poor. I was talking to somebody the other day, and they, they were talking about being poor because you know how this world is. It's all about stuff, it's all about what you got, how you get it, be successful. That's what the world gives you. What we give you, what the church gives you, is eternal life. A mansion that is gone up in heaven to build for us that you can't put your hands on right now. But I told that person, I said, you know what? I said, I've been serving the Lord for 20 years. I have never found him in his word to lie to me. I have never seen where I stood on his word where he did not meet me on the other end somewhere. And brothers and sisters, I was raised by a man that loved God. But he had, was took to the cleaners by some mean women. I'm going to say it. I ain't playing games. There's meanness out there. Everybody you look at ain't good. People mean. If they ain't got Jesus in their heart, there ain't a good thing in them. Do you hear what I'm saying? Because all good things come from heaven above. They can, they can put on a persona and they can do this, but on the, on the spiritual side, they as rotten as apples that's been on the ground all year long. And I told them, I said, man, I remember, Jay, you may remember this because you remember, does anybody remember a time when there was no air conditioning? Yeah. 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 Can I get a hallelujah for air conditioning? <laughs> <laughs> well, I remember this time. You've probably heard me talk about this. Some demonic... Jezebel, I'm about to get mad now. Cause that was my daddy. I, I broke my wrist because I didn't want to hit her in the face. See, kids don't listen to this part. <laughs> I'm just human. But then she was taking she was taking advantage of my daddy. He didn't mess with my daddy. And I watched my daddy. I watched the house go rolling down the road. We lived in a mobile home. And my daddy, I love him. He said, Dale, he said, oh, boy, it's just a house. He said, I got $5,000. He said, I got another one being delivered. I've already bought another piece of land. I said, praise God, Dad. I didn't want to go stay with Grandma and all my cousins. <laughs> and brothers and sisters, I've watched my daddy for years till the day he died. Mop four by eight sheets of plywood with Clorox. Because he didn't want any more stuff. All he wanted was his kids, his grandkids, to know Jesus. And if we knew Jesus, he would do anything in the world, be willing to sacrifice anything in the world so that we can have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. Oh, it wasn't because he couldn't do it. No, it was because he was raising my Aunt Pearl. I did cook that boiled everything. She boiled steak. <laughs> Nasty <nastiest> mess. <laughs> But you didn't see in front of his Aunt Pearl who was as sincere and honest, who had, who was sweet, showing the back of coming down, and coming down. He would sacrifice. My daddy would buy her stuff because he loved her until the day she died. Or my grandpa, who he would buy lucky stripes for when he lost his mind. He started going back to the day he'd call us all kind of names. Good and bad. <laughs> and he 
He told Daddy one time we were sitting on the porch, Sister Kathy, am I getting too long here? I'm just, I'm just chasing rabbits. Don't forget, be willing to obey. <laughs> he looked at, he looked at Paul, looked at Daddy and I one day, and he said, I want, a, I want a pack of Lucky Strikes. And buddy, you didn't smoke in my grandma's house. Son, she's the one that prayed that off of my, my grandpa. What, what do you mean? She told my grandpa when he was in his 40s, said, I'm going to pray until you get sores in your mouth. Son, you didn't mess with prayer warriors back then. We don't pray like that anymore. We're like, give it to them, Lord. Pile it on them, Lord. Just give them what they want, Lord. Whatever they want. Don't say no. God forbid we say no. Just pile it on them. My daddy looked at me. He looked at Pa Joker. That was his name, Pa Joker. What a name. You remember it, don't you, Ta? Yeah, Ta used to hang out with us. We'd go to the beach, moonfish, and all that kind of stuff. Ask him what moonfish out of service is. I can't say it from the pulpit. <laughs> I, I feel bad. Yeah. And we would be with Pa Joker, and we'd be staying with them. And Pa Joker, he was like, hey, this is I mean, the doctors had already told us, listen, he ain't coming back. He ain't, he's 82. He ain't coming back. Daddy looked at me and he said, Pa, you want a pack of, or Daddy, you want a pack of Lucky Strikes? Looked at me. I said, I'm on it. I did. You know what I went and did, bud? You know, on the internet, I bought him some candy Lucky Strikes. <laughs> <laughs> because I, so Daddy told Grandma, said, said Daddy wants some Lucky Strikes. He's been dating back to when he was in the Army. Back in the day, that's what you did in the Army. She said, well, he ain't getting that. Daddy tried to plead with Grandma. Or I was, we were all trying to deal with Mom, Grandma. Come on, let him have her. Let him have her Lucky Strike. He ain't getting that. I don't care how old he is. I don't care what them doctors. She still believes in God more than him. Him 83, 82. Oh, ye of little faith. I ordered the lucky strike. Buddy, they came in and daddy shot me a picture, Charles. They were swinging on the porch. And Pa had a candy lucky strike. <laughs> 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 know why I'm sharing that story. That was not in the plan. <laughs> but I can tell you this. If you will be willing to obey the Spirit of God, happiness can return to your life. Amen. If you won't suppress the Spirit of God and you will listen to the voice of the Spirit of God and let Him work in your life, and you are willing to obey, God will open up the windows of heaven. He'll give you a life that you never dreamed. Your life won't be a mess and chaotic. And if it does, you'll have a peace that everybody will want. You'll have a joy that everybody will want to talk to you about. You'll be able to be free in the spirit because where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Your question I go to if the Lord's talking to you about doing something, what's the word say about it? If the word says it, then hey, I'm going to do it. The willingness will be restored in your heart, in your life. So Father in heaven, You help us to be willing to obey as Isaiah was telling the people. Would you help us to listen to the voice of the, of the Lord and the Holy Spirit? Lord, I don't want to just partly obey because you know the, the word of God, it, it knows the intents of our heart and we know what you said in Hebrews in chapter 4. Whenever you said it knows the, what we're thinking and our thoughts. It's, it's 
So God, we're, we're standing here, hands open, knowing that we're not perfect. But Lord, you know our heart. We're willing, God. We're willing to be obedient to the word of the Lord. We're willing to stand firm on the word of God. And we're willing to trust in the baptism of the Holy Ghost and the Holy Spirit in our life. We, we can't do it, Jesus. But you can because you are good. So, God, I don't know what you want to do for these people, God. But I know what your word says. I pray that whatever they need released in their life, God, that they would be willing to obey the Holy Spirit. You know it, the Holy Spirit. I pray, Lord Jesus, that... That we would be free from the enemy and the spirit of rebellion that bonds us and bounds us. That we would be free from bitterness. That we would be free from hurt. But that only thing we would desire would be alone with you, God. Right now, Lord, you are audience of one. Right now, Lord Jesus, we stand before you alone, not my husband. Not my wife, not my kids. We stand before you alone asking you to help us. When I'm reminded of the pleading of the early apostles in the book of Acts, whenever he told them, why do you always resist the Holy Spirit? Lord, help us not to resist the Holy Spirit, but help the Holy Spirit who's a person to be our comforter, our teacher. The baptizer. In the name of Jesus. Pastor Bradley, would you sing that church? Would you stand? If you're willing to obey, I want you to come down here and just be willing to do that. You say, how's it start? You say, I'm willing to step out, willing to obey.